Gotcha. So we look at disease in Chinese medicine as an imbalance. So whether there's an excess or a deficiency, and then just exactly where that imbalance is. So it could be an excess of yang energy, of a deficiency of yin energy, um, internal heat. We also look at pathogenic factors from the outside. Um, we look at how different emotions affect our qi mm. and our shen in different ways. Um, and then you get a, a customized acupuncture treatment each time you come in. It's based off of your chief complaint, yes, but also how are you presenting in that moment. Gotcha. And gotcha. it's like a, it's like an onion. You just kind of peel away the layers sure. to get to the root. We get to the root cause of disease. You're listening to the Nutrition World Podcast, a show about navigating the intricacies of holistic wellness. We're a natural health food store located in Chattanooga, Tennessee, and we believe that optimal health and peak performance should be accessible to everyone. Hello, friends. Welcome back to the Nutrition World Podcast. My name is Brian Strickland. I'm the producer of the show. And on today's episode, we have the pleasure of speaking with Jamie Jackson. If you're a Chattanooga native, you might be familiar with Jamie. She is a herbalist and acupuncturist trained in traditional Chinese medicine. She's gone through years of extensive training on these subjects, um, and we love having her on our campus. Katie is going to sit down with Jamie today to just talk about her own experience with acupuncture, um, what it is, what it's like, some of the fears that people have, some of the misconceptions that people have. Um, and Jamie's really going to break down the ins and outs of acupuncture and some of the finer points of traditional Chinese medicine. So we really hope that you enjoyed this episode. Let's go ahead and hop into the conversation with Katie and Jamie Jackson. Hi, Jamie. Hi. Thanks for coming today. So, um, you know, my goal of having you on our podcast was to just sit down and kind of go through some acupuncture thoughts and ideas and and the schooling that you went to to get you to this place of being an acupuncturist. Um, you know, here at Nutrition World and at the Wellness Corner, of which you're a part of, we, we really want to build this team of practitioners that can be here to help people through problems in life. And mm -hmm. the problems may be um, stressors, maybe health issues, emotional issues, whatever that may be. And, and you know our philosophy and you're aligned to it, the fact that the body is able to heal, mm -hmm. but sometimes we just have to give it the right tools and the right things to do that. So mm -hmm. we're just honored to have you on our podcast today to speak about acupuncture, your specialty. So if you don't mind, let's just dive in and kind of chat about how you even got into this. Okay. Well, thank you um, for having me. Um, I studied in Colorado, um, in Denver. And I got into acupuncture through one of my best friends out there. Um, she's a veterinarian. And about 15, maybe 20 years ago, she went to acupuncture school for animals. Mm -hmm. And so she was, um, she would needle animals. And I used to be a vet tech. So we worked together at the animal hospital. And she started treating my dog Moose for degenerative neuropathy. Mm -hmm. um, he was a yellow lab. It's really common in dogs. And I, I saw the change in him um, and just his quality of life because it gets to where they're, they just have a poor quality of life. Mm -hmm. But we were able to extend his life through acupuncture. And then she went on to human acupuncture school. And so I'd go down to the school and I would get treated. And then I noticed how I started to feel and how I started to feel better. And um, it just really in was in line with what I really wanted to do. I was, I've always been wanting to help animals or people. Um, and with acupuncture, you kind of get instant gratification for the mm. work that you're doing. Um, and so then I started the, the journey. It was a three year master program. Mm -hmm. um, and then I had to take four boards to become certified mm. um, to be wow. an herbalist and an acupuncturist. So it was, um, it was a long, it was a long journey. Um, but it was like three continuous years. Like we did trimester. So we went like around the clock. Um, wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And then I moved here to Chattanooga um, in 2016, I think. And then I brought my practice here. Wow. Okay. Yeah. And so for people that have never experienced acupuncture, tell just a little bit about what the philosophy is even about. Like we all know acupuncture and we think needles going in places mm -hmm. and what's kind of the, the idea behind the specific places they're going. Cause I know it's not, Oh, I have a pain here. Put the needle right here. Right. You know? Right. So, so um, with my practice and most um, Chinese medicine practitioners, we do a thorough intake of um, past medical history, surgeries, um, just emotionally how you're doing. What does your diet consist of? Um, any cravings in your diet? Mm. Any medications you're on? Um, any changes with hearing, vision? 
um, hair loss, things like that. And then I do a, an assessment, a tongue diagnosis, and I feel pulses. So based on a chief complaint and the pulse quality, so not necessarily beats per minute, mm -hmm. um, but just how does the pulse feel? Because each organ system has a position on the tongue and a position in your pulse. Mm. Um, so that's how we diagnose in our medicine. We take the chief complaint based on, um, and then tongue presentation and pulse. And then that gives us a kind of roadmap as to what points we want to use. Because every point, they're like a little army and every point has a specific job, but when they come together, it gets the body back in balance. Gotcha. So we look at disease in Chinese medicine as an imbalance. So whether there's an excess or a deficiency, and then just exactly where that imbalance is. So it could be an excess of yang energy, of a deficiency of yin energy, um, internal heat. We also look at pathogenic factors from the outside. Um, we look at how different emotions affect our chi mm. and our shen in different ways. Um, and then you get a, a customized acupuncture treatment each time you come in it's based off of your chief complaint yes but also how are you presenting in that moment gotcha and gotcha. it's like a it's like an onion you just kind of peel away the layers sure. to get to the root we get to the root cause of disease that's amazing yeah. so tell me a little bit more about the tongue because i'm just fascinated with that so like what are you looking for i mean white spots or yeah so you're looking at the body shape uh -huh. um if it's fat if it's thin if there's a coat mm. um what kind of coat is it a thick white coat mm -hmm. is it a yellow coat um is there no coat at all are there cracks are there teeth marks mm. um in what color is it is it like a dusky purple is it pale is it red? Wow. Um, yeah. So okay. everyone's tongue is is a little different. Oh, that's so interesting. I know. You know, because yeah. in our world of um, going to visit a physician or a doctor, I bet no one's ever had their tongue examined. You know. Yeah. And maybe when they're at the dentist, maybe you know the dentist is perhaps quickly glanced at it or something. Yeah. But generally, it's never. It's never. It's never looked at. So no. is this very typical in other cultures or in? you know, practicing parts of the other um, countries or parts of the world? Yeah. Is this a bigger medicine than I here? I don't know outside of the TCM realm, mm -hmm. um, but for traditional Chinese medicine, you should be looking for a diagnosis. You should be, your practitioner should be looking at your tongue and feeling your pulses every time. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Because there are some things that people, like, especially their first visit, they may not want to open up mm -hmm. about everything. Um, and so if you're intuitive and you can kind of pick up on things, even if they don't tell you mm -hmm. based on how the pulses feel and what the tongue looks like. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so for people that haven't experienced acupuncture and they're worried about what it feels like to have a needle go in mm -hmm. or how deep does the needle go? Is it sanitary? Is it safe? Touch a little bit on that topic. Okay. Yep. So people think needles and I, I love it when people are like covered in tattoos, but they're afraid of yeah. acupuncture. Yeah. because it, So the needle, there are different diameters of the needle, but they're typically no bigger than a strand of hair okay. in thickness. Um, depending on where you place the acupuncture, needles mm -hmm. um there are certain depths that you can go so somewhere along the glutes you can go deeper versus the upper back where there's you know the lungs and things so you just got to mm -hmm. be cognizant of where the needle's going and that'll determine the depth um gotcha. okay but the needles shouldn't hurt like some of them might be a little bit more tender than mm -hmm. others but they don't go they don't go like super deep to where you're going to hit a nerve or anything like you shouldn't sure um and so, and most people do get a little freaked out at first, or they might get nervous, or they're they can't relax because mm -hmm. they're like, you know, like scared of. Mm -hmm. But the needles are single use; they're sterile. They're not used on anybody else. Um, they get discarded after each use, and um, I wipe down each point with alcohol prior to insertion. Um, and then usually the needle retention is like twenty five to thirty minutes. Okay. A lot of times people will fall asleep. Like I've walked back, I've walked in to check on people, and they're sleeping. Sure. Um, and usually, like, they're pretty relaxed by the end of it. And if they're not fully relaxed the first time, when they come back the second time, they know what to expect. So walking in, they're already more calm. Sure. Than, I can believe that. Yeah. yeah. I think just the, the idea of a needle seems to be a scary thought to people. Yeah. And it's like, how is that relaxing? There's needles all right, over Right. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And I'll tell a little bit about my experience because I've come to you multiple times uh -huh. and and um, had never had acupuncture until I had come to you. And I was a little apprehensive that first time. Mm -hmm. I kind of thought, how am I going to lay here and then look down at my and see all these needles, yeah. you know, all over my body, but extremely relaxing experience. Mm -hmm. um, no pain at all, if anything, a tiny little almost like 
like you've maybe pulled a little hair mm-hmm. feeling, just yeah. a little tiny tweak, but yeah. nothing that I would ever experience as pain. Very, very relaxing. Yeah. Um, I know, you know, oftentimes there's a point in your ear. Mm-hmm. What is that point? Because that is something I've always seen yes. when I've looked in acupuncture. So there are hundreds of points in the ear, okay. actually. And it, there's different phases. I, I do some auricular therapy, but there are practitioners that they, that's all they do is okay. just the ear. And there's like the English ear, the Chinese ear, and then different phases of the day. Some points like are more prominent than others. It's wow. Yeah. It's like, I, I'm very like, as far as ear acupuncture is what there is to know, like I'm, mm-hmm. I'm like baby version of it. Um, but there are multiple points in the ear that you can treat. There's one um, called Shen Men. Mm-hmm. It's used to calm the mind. We use that a lot. There's a protocol for like um, smoking sensation and addiction oh, okay. that we can do. Um, and you can place ear seeds. So I'll do this with clients that I know if they can't come in, you know, that if there's gonna be too long in between each treatment, mm-hmm. I'll send them home with um, ear seeds that they can press on. It's just like a vicaria seed on a little bandage mm-hmm. and you can put them on certain acupuncture points. And then they, when they're at home, they can gotcha. press on them. And they usually last like three to five days. Oh, interesting. Yeah, okay. but they now make them where it's like they have crystals. So it looks like you have like earrings. Oh, funny. Yeah, yeah. You so see, they can, can actually look stylish with yeah, them Yeah, you can get blinged out in your ear. That's hilarious. <laughs> How funny. So yeah. tell me, I know, you know, we're getting to the root cause of what's going on, but what are the needles actually doing when they're in? Like, what's that idea? So they're either bringing energy, basically, like, is to keep it simple, they're either bringing energy to an area that needs energy or they're dissipating. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. And okay. so a lot of times you might have, you know, something, like you might have something going on in your belly. I won't just do belly points. I'll do distal points because you got to tell that energy where to go mm. and what to do. And then... um Points can be coupled with others to kind of reinforce their job. Um, and so it's the whole point is not that each individual point does their individual job. They work collectively mm-hmm. to move your energy throughout your body. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. And so when we think about the word energy, I know mm-hmm. some people are a little off put occasionally yeah. in our in our culture, maybe in our area of the, of the world. Could you kind of, if there is a, a way to distill down like the word energy to... to give a little comfort to people because I know that's a that's yeah a big idea in a lot of other cultures and it's a big idea in healing and getting us to our best self but yeah. sometimes it's looked at as like an odd yeah. type of medicine for people I, I I guess to correlate it with like a western standpoint you can correlate it like your breath mm-hmm. um and just your overall um quality quality of life I guess your Mm -hmm. life force Mm -hmm. um and it's not just your chi energy we're also working with body fluids working with blood we're working with um yin and yang Mm -hmm. you know um interior exterior so when we have imbalances we could have the excess energy Mm -hmm. or not enough um not enough energy to do our for our digestion or Um, too much energy causing migraines and headaches or um, so it's just about like your life worth sure your breath um, to correlate it in a western way if that yeah that makes sense I would kind of think even in my mind like if someone was to walk in this room that we're in right now and they were really angry or Mm -hmm. they were really like tense and and making sounds of like you pick up on that yeah you would feel that right we'd sit here and we'd be like ooh, like we're focusing but someone's mad in this room and so that is kind of like obviously a type of energy that's Mm -hmm. going on so we're kind of picking up on that Mm -hmm. where with acupuncture we're not going to be working with someone's angry energy but we're going to be working with balancing maybe the dysfunction of energy that could be going on in their own body. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Correct. That makes sense. Okay. So, um, you know, I came to you after I had had my first son, actually, um, for acupuncture Mm -hmm. in those postpartum days. And Mm -hmm. for any mamas out there, anyone that's had a child, we know how heavy and hard those can be with with the body, the mental state, emotions, Uh mind, all of that. And I remember it was like a – it felt like I had really – had a few moments to actually feel calm and peaceful when I came into mm-hmm. your office and was able to to relax there for that brief hour. That was mm-hmm. probably the only hour I got for right. a couple of months there, you know, <laughs> or whatever. Um, and it was wonderful. It helped. It kind of, to me, felt like I was given a, a gift of ability to heal mm-hmm. for a few moments, give the mind some resiliency and some strength in mm-hmm. those kind of weaker mental state times and yeah. I remember kind of speaking to you I'm like this is a lot harder than I thought motherhood yeah. and this postpartum time and so I'm not sure of course exactly what you did but it was it was a very 
relaxing and rejuvenating um, mm-hmm. experience for me. And and I appreciate that. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah, especially postpartum mamas. I mean, you whether you have a C-section or a vaginal birth, you lose a lot of blood. Mm-hmm. Um, and the quality of our blood is a kind of a direct reflection of the quality of our shen or our mm-hmm. mind. And so when our blood is decreased, um, we have more of a deficiency, then we have more things like anxiety, overthinking that's going on. Mm -hmm. So it's about just building up your blood, building up the quality of blood um, so you can then relax your mind. That makes total sense. And that's what a lot of ladies experience postpartum Mm -hmm. is that overthinking, Mm -hmm. almost like looping thoughts, Mm -hmm. anxiety, Mm -hmm. you know, depression. Is the baby breathing? Is this, you know, like just over analytical (laughs) thoughts that maybe have some place but don't have the yeah. place that they exist to, you know to some mm-hmm. extent so mm-hmm. oh, that's wonderful so tell me let's get a little bit more into like the type of client that you see and and conditions and whatnot that you can help and i know we have to be careful with always treating and diagnosing but mm-hmm. i think with acupuncture you can you know speak a little bit more loosely perhaps about the right the type of client you could help and and what issue you could help them with yeah you know so t- being from an eastern background i can't technically say I treat mm-hmm. you know a western diagnosis um, acupuncture can help with any any ailment that mm-hmm. you have um, I typically see I don't see a lot of pediatrics um, a lot of pain digestive issues um, infertility is huge mm. acupuncture is really good at treating infertility digestive um, a lot of mental imbalance whether it's anxiety um, depression, so acupuncture, Chinese herbs, but primarily, yeah, I would say most of my clients, um, pain of some sort. Pain, okay. Yeah, pain's a big one. Yeah. Low back pain. Mm. There's a lot of low back pain. Okay, good to know. Yeah. So and, tell me, you know, if someone was listening and they had low back pain, the million dollar question always is, how many times before yeah. I would get relief or how many times do I need to come? And yeah. even myself, we're kind of working through something and with our son a little bit right now, and I'll ask myself, how many more times before we start seeing results or, yeah. you know, and I think I'm like that, I know that's not really the way the body works. You can't exactly know how yeah. many times someone needs to visit you, but is there any ball game figure you could give or? A, it's hard to say because, yeah. you know, we're treating the body in the moment. And so everybody is going to respond differently to treatment. I have clients where I've treated them one time and they are good to go and they mm-hmm. don't need to come back. Um, or I have other clients that they come in once a week, they come in once every two weeks, or they come in um, once a month. I leave it up to the client as far as their time and their financial resources to come in. Um, I say if you've never had acupuncture, especially if you had something chronic, give it at least three treatments Mm -hmm. and three treatments, you know, within two to three week period. If you don't see results on the first, you're most likely going to see results on the second and third. Mm -hmm. And then we can kind of go like, okay, you got relief for four days, you got relief for five days. Now let's, we can, so then we can tailor your treatments based on um, just how you respond each time. Sure. And are you doing that assessment every time they come in? Every time they come okay. in. Okay. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Makes and then we sense. can do other things like fire cupping, gua sha, herbal therapy. So it's not, I don't practice just acupuncture. I have yeah. other secondary modalities within my um, Chinese medicine scope that we can Gotcha. We can Talk do a little well. bit about those. What is uh, gua, gua sha? sha. So yeah. I use, well, it's becoming popular for facial um, stuff. I don't mm. necessarily do it on the face because the whole point is that you're trying to create a sha or a redness. Mm-hmm. Um, but you can do it on anywhere like a cup doesn't fit Hmm. um so it's just usually like a porcelain spoon and just scraping along the musculature to create um like a redness and so it helped to increase circulation it's really it's awesome for the neck really yeah it's really good for the neck or i've done it like on elbows for like tennis elbow things like that gotcha Mm -hmm. and does it feel good as it's being done it does feel okay yeah okay and then moxa bustion okay moxa that is um an herb it's called mugwort. It's used for it's used for a couple things, and you can use it. You can drink it as a tea, have that as a tincture. Mm-hmm. Um, also, it comes like loose leaf that we can put on top of a needle and burn it. Mm-hmm. So it helps bring warmth into a channel. So if the, if you're seeing like a cold stagnation somewhere, whether it's in the uterus or along the collaterals, it'll help bring warmth. Mm-hmm. It can also um, stop bleeding. Um, it's been used to turn a breech baby mm-hmm. on the toe. Yeah. yeah, so you can burn a moxa stick. Um, I love the smell of it, but it's 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 a really good like warming herb. Cool, that's yeah. so interesting. Yeah. I bet hardly anyone has ever even heard of moxa bustion. Mm-hmm. Probably not. Yeah, yeah. 
That's so interesting. Yeah. So interesting. So when someone comes to you, they won't have to know what to ask for. They would come to you and they would they would just tell you the chief complaint, as mm-hmm. you said, and then you create this plan for yep. them. Yep. Right? So I go up through and I have my intake and I ask I ask all the questions. Gotcha. And then they, you know, obviously they would like to divulge as much as possible because the more I know you know, the better um, the potential outcome, but they don't have to, they don't have to know anything. Gotcha. Um, and I w- essentially walk them through each session and they're about an hour. If it's your first time, maybe an hour and 15 minutes long. Um, but yeah, I usually retain the needles for about 30 minutes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And I love that, that you ask the assessment every time. And mm-hmm. I also love that sometimes you're asking the questions to dig deeper. Cause I know in our store, when people come in, honestly, probably 75 percent of the um the work we're doing is listening to them Mm -hmm. and then asking them certain questions to lead us to the next answer Mm -hmm. because it seems that someone will walk in our door and say you know i don't sleep well but then if i ask them well what's your stress level what if you eaten all day long have you had enough water you know enough of these questions i can kind of get to okay that person was really stressed out and amped up and then trying to go into a relaxed state to sleep they're going to have some issues doing that and so with you you asking enough of the questions sometimes they may not even know what the root problem is they probably don't know what the root problem is yeah but you're kind of allowing the body and then plus your questions to kind of couple to get the answer I think people too, like they might, the the change might be a small, like might be minuscule at first. Mm-hmm. And then they might think like, well, I don't feel any different. And then you come back in and you start asking mm-hmm. questions. It's like, oh, actually yes. I am sleeping a little bit better. Mm-hmm. Or I didn't wake up. I only woke up twice this week mm-hmm. instead of four times. So the change might not be that huge. Mm-hmm. And so like revisiting all the questions, it gets the client to like really think and yeah. like, oh yeah, this is better. You're right. Okay, cool. So so that way they don't get they don't seem to get as frustrated yeah with, that makes total sense yeah i've even done that in my life before if i've been addressing something and then something goes in a positive direction i actually kind of forget how maybe negative it was right until someone re-asks well how's that going and i'm like oh, oh it's all better it's actually better. or that yeah. all went away and then you're like oh wow yeah, yeah. and then you know the the one struggle as acupuncturists is that you know if somebody has a chronic condition it didn't get there overnight yeah. and it's not going to go away overnight and just being consistent and being compliant mm-hmm. you know is um huge yeah yeah totally This was so helpful. You know, one of the things that I have spoken about on this podcast before or in some writings with Nutrition World is like um, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and over again. And expecting different results. Yeah, and expecting different results. So one of the things I could kind of speak to in in the form of acupuncture is if you haven't tried it and you've someone's been experiencing the same thing over and over Mm -hmm. again it could never hurt to try something new you know and and looking at an area of your life and saying okay you know i've i've gone to this physician i've tried this medication i've tried this maybe dietary change i've tried this well maybe just trying the next thing is is potentially something that could be beneficial for that person and so opening up to the idea that they're not going to have a harmful side effect they're not going to have a negative experience right um and it is totally backed by what thousands of years of of yep. um you know research and and just anecdotal use mm-hmm. even you know yeah. for centuries and centuries yeah. so yeah i'm so grateful that we got to speak today Yay, and thank thanks. you for coming thanks for on having here me. you're welcome we're so happy you're a partner of the wellness corner and i love it yeah thank you so much you're welcome <laughs>